This is a Hawker Hurricane. It's a World War II fighter airplane. It was actually designed and first flown in 1935, and at the time it was quite a spectacular airplane for its day. In the British Royal Air Force, and the design is British by the way, uh, it was the first monoplane, meaning single wing fighter, in all of RAF history. It was the first one with retractable undercarriage. It was the first one to sport eight 303 caliber machine guns. It was the first fighter plane to exceed 300 miles an hour. In fact, it was good for about 320 or 330. That was a 150 miles an hour faster than their previous fastest airplane. So it was quite a spectacular performer for its day. But the evolution of fighter planes, and in fact all aircraft at that time, was happening at a tremendous pace. So even with the war beginning just four or five years later, the poor old Hurricane was starting to suffer. It was being outcompeted by other British designs and certainly other German designs too. It's probably best known for its role in the famous Battle of Britain where the Germans were going to invade England and of course had to knock out the Royal Air Force in order to do that. Well, the Hawker Hurricane here shot down more German aircraft than all other Allied aircraft types combined and it continued to serve throughout World War II. Its important Canadian connection is that the RAF and the British Air Ministry came to Canada before World War II started looking for a safe place to build uh, some of their war machines. They got hold of Canadian Car and Foundry in Port Arthur and Fort William, Ontario and said, hey, could you start building us Hawker Hurricanes? So in fact, Canada ended up building 10% of the entire production of Hawker Hurricanes between 1938 and 1942. And this is one of those airplanes. This airplane represents so many stories and stands in for so many fascinating people. Like Elsie McGill, who was the world's first female design engineer, aircraft design engineer, who oversaw the construction of these airplanes in Canada in 1940. That was a phenomenal accomplishment. Of course, we can tell her story now that we have the airplane here and talk about her involvement. Gordon Hill, who flew this very airplane in 1943. And then there's another whole marvelous story about how this airplane actually got here. Sold surplus after the war. There was a dream to build a museum here in the 60s with a very dynamic and fascinating and somewhat shady character who brought it here. So there's that story too, and then the airplane kind of being shuffled away and finally resurrected and, and brought back to life as, it, as we see it today. When we acquired this airplane in October of 2012, prior to that, the airplane had been completely disassembled. There were no two pieces stuck together. There wasn't a nut and a bolt stuck together. It was just a giant collection of pieces with no labeling, and no instructions. This aircraft will be our, our new centerpiece. Um, it's, it's quite the aircraft. It's uh, built in the 1940s, um, and uh, there's only a few left in the world. And uh, so we were happy to um, take it in and protect and preserve and, and care for it. Mm -hmm. 